Hello, SuperCon 2019, how are we? Thank you, thank you so much for coming out to this uh, ongoing experiment, this little program we created called The Voice of SuperCon. And this all spun out a couple of years ago because <clears throat> every voice acting panel we always had, people always ask, hey, how do you, what advice do you give to be a voice actor? And I want to be a voice actor. So what we decided to try to do is give you a little bit of a, some practical insight. And how is that? Well, because what we're going to do is we start having people read uh, lines from scripts and copy and stuff like that, but not anime or cartoon uh, scripts. Uh, things such as commercials, PSAs, things like that. Because if you are really serious about pursuing a career in this, this comes with the territory. And uh, also, too, some uh, non-language um, reactions, things such as that. So we have, uh, have, we've, had our, we've had our tryouts on Friday. Jay boiled down to our final eight. And before we do that, though, the way this is going to work, like the famous show American Idol, Voices of Brown, same thing, we're going to have people come on up. And they're going to do one round where they're going to read scripts. Second round, they're going to do what I call the, uh, the, the, the fatal 10 and the, 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 the phonetic fury. They're going to go through. I'm going to give them some uh, cues and things to do. They'll have to act out. And then finally, our judges will uh, make a decision and declare a voice of Supercon. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, Supercon 2019, are you ready to meet our amazing celebrity guest judges? First of all, please welcome to the stage from the Red Dead video game series, my old and dear friend. Give it up for Stephen J. Palmer. <laughs> Next, ladies and gentlemen, you heard him way back in the day as Launchpad McQuack. He is also a veteran of numerous commercials, film, television, and broadcasting. Please give it up for everybody's favorite convention uncle, Terry McGovern! So, gentlemen, as I said before, what you're going to do is you're going to see some, some well-talented, well-meaning, some young people out there that will get expressed a desire to go into voice acting, and they're doing it at, at, the, at the, they're going to actually do copy in front of you. So they're not going to be screaming, Hadouken, they're not going to be doing anime stuff. They've got the temerity and the bones to actually be doing some actual real copy, as we would call it. I don't know. Do we have this? Now, this we, is your we first, should be we should be judging stuff lesson. today. Apparently, <laughs> what do you do with a dead mic? <laughs> <laughs> what? Thank you, thank you. There we go. Thank you, daughter. My children are here to help me. Oh, we are in for some fun. So what we're going to do is, is like I said, they're going to read some stuff, and then for for their insight and for the insight of our audience and, and the people who wanted to compete but couldn't make it to the final eight, we would love for you to give some brief insight into them and anything you have to say from your past experience to, to throw at these people will be absolutely appreciated. We would love to hear what you have to say. So that being said, okay. let me introduce my co-host. He's the co-producer of this event since we started. Give it up for Jay. It's Mandy Patinkin. <laughs> All right, good afternoon, Supercon. I know it's a Sunday, but I need more energy. Good afternoon, Supercon. There we go. All right, thank you so much for being here. I do want to welcome our finalists here. First, we have a wonderful gentleman by the name of Christian Basil. Come on up. Now, Christian, if you can do me a favor, I need you to read, please, commercial number one. <laughs> Good start. I need to get me a microphone. <laughs> What's that? Is that what I said? I'm sorry. I hope I didn't curse anybody out over there. <laughs> Yes. Number one, please. The Cape Crusader meets the big cheese. Evil cheeseless noodles beware. 
It's the new Kraft DC macaroni and cheese in eight of your favorite superhero shapes. Smothered in cheeses, Kraft cheese sauce. It's your hero for hunger. Good, very good. Uh, uh, so what did we do, we give our uh -huh. comments uh, Yes, now? go right ahead. Well, don't laugh at us. Not, it's I'm our sorry, first not, time. I, we're just, I'm nervous. We're just starting out. Oh, I understand. I'm nervous. I'm I, the first guy. I, I like Bye. the way, um, uh, I'm sorry, your name again is? My name is Christian Basil. Okay, so I, I, I would, I would uh, you had the right idea, this sort of hushed quality as okay. you start out. I would maybe even hush it a little bit more. Okay. Remember, you've got the microphone. The microphone is your friend, mm -hmm. and, and really, if, you, if you're smart and you use it right, it does a lot of the work for you. And it's different than acting without a microphone, because you can get really close and do a thing called voice proximity, which is like the caped crusader. I mean, just being that close with that little energy, and then you can you know, start to get away from it and really expand. You must breathe more than once. That's yeah. not going to be enough for you. So the Cape Crusader meets the big cheese. Evil cheeseless noodles, beware. Quick breath. It's the new, because when you really want to take off, start flying at this next combination of words. Why? Because that's the sponsor. They pay you, so always make a big sell for them. And then I think you can slow down and punch that last thing. It's your hero. You know, give it some word-for-word -word, uh, attention. Uh, you're certainly on the right path. Yeah. No, I, pretty much everything that, uh, that Terry just said it actually. Well, Uncle sad. Terry. <laughs> no, Uncle Terry here. Um, right, you were doing great. You did have a nice kind of warm quality right where at your favorite superhero shapes. That's that's where you got breathy and and you try to pull forward so you, yeah it's breaking out the beats as far as uh, as far as breathing um but uh it, it was it was a uh, you did great for our first time and uh i i wrote a little check you uh a little bit of humor there that goes on in the booth uh don't try to milk it too much when you uh, you know once you get in there but uh it's very funny and i would just say relax and breathe more and you've got a good timbre to your voice all right, Christian Basil, thank you so much, contestant. Christian Basil, ladies and gentlemen. Big round of applause. You can leave the microphone there and the script there as well, please. All right, next up. Good job, kid. Good job. Ty Hooker. Come on down, Mr. Ty Hooker. You are number two. Go, brother. Okay, Mr. Ty, if you can read page three, number 19. And they say we're leaving home. We're going to what home was always supposed to be. So let us understand the situation. We are going into battle against a tough and determined enemy. I can't promise you that we'll, I will bring you all home alive. But this I swear before you and before Almighty God that when we go into battle, I will be the first to set foot on the field and I will be the last to step off. And I will leave no man behind, dead or alive. We will all come home together. So help me God. Well done. Um, you want to take the lead I, off? Yeah, no, uh, Ty, I, I think that was, uh, that was very good. good. Now, you, uh, you also have a good timbre to your voice. You, the way you started off uh, was very, it was actually very kind of, uh, sincere and soft and i i really like that uh, approach and you head up into uh you know i will bring you all home alive um i would say the time when you got to but this i swear before you this is a this is a this is a turn uh a turn in direction as far as uh, emotion and 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 stature as your character i would uh make it maybe make it a little bit more firm uh because you're driving a point across you're talking to a group and so it'd be more, but this, I swear before you, uh, just kind of make it, make it more direct, uh, a bit of a pivot uh, in emotion. But I thought, uh, I thought you did very good. I agree. Um, here's my thought on it. Um, this is a pep talk, primarily. 
you know, a pep talk. And, uh, and then it builds in, in significance and importance. One of the things about delivering copy, uh, delivering a script, is to make sure that you're not always at the same pitch. You don't start here and end here. Give us a little bit of an arc or a little bit of a, a transition. And I think in, in, in most pep talks, the coach usually starts out conversationally. You know, uh, well, they say we're going home. Maybe not that conversational or casual, but we're going to what home always was supposed to be and so on and so forth. And then suddenly it gets a hold of him and he says, I can't promise you. And that's where it becomes intense and, and a little bit more suspenseful. But I would start off a little bit, just a little bit lighter as if to welcome everybody in and here we are, we're a team. And now the rousing starts. Now the, the hallelujahs, if you will, start, okay? Those are my thoughts. All right, Any questions perfect. on what I said or we said? Okay. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you, Ty. Excellent. Miss Rachel Zool. Rachel Zool. Rachel Zool. Rachel Zool. Wow. How are you? Your last, na your last name is Zool? Yeah. Are you waiting for Gozer? So my best friend, he says, there is no Rachel, only Zool all the time. Like one of my best friends from yeah. high school. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Good. Okay, Rachel, number four, please, in the commercials on page one. Oh. Four, page one. Okay. So, sorry. Smear campaigns, mudslinging, twisting the truth. Why do politicians resort to such underhanded tactics? Do they think it really helps their campaign? It's ugly, uncalled for, and deceitful. So why do we allow them to continue? It's time to level the playing field. You want our vote? Then focus on the issues that affect all of us. This election season, advocate for a clean election process, paid for by the Committee for Cleaner Elections. Very well, done. There's probably not a word that's used more in commercial copy in directions than this conversational thing. And I cannot impress upon you enough, the second time I've said it, how important it is to understand how the microphone works for you. It's like having a person's ear right in front of you. So if you're gonna yell, naturally you're gonna step back, you don't wanna deafen them. But when it's conversational, it, there's a way to get inside people's head by using the mic, and you might wanna, might wanna try this. Uh, what was this, number four? Number four, yeah. correct. Smear campaigns, mudslinging, twisting the truth. Why do politicians? So it's, it's more like you're, you're talking confidentially to somebody, and then you can build from there. A lot of people have a fear of getting close to the mic and hearing their voice so immediate, you know? We want to use it as an announcement platform. And you can get to that because this is an announcement. But to start out, it's almost like you're thinking out loud, smear campaigns, this, that. Why does it have to be like that? And it's more seductive, I think. You know what I mean by that? Okay, yeah. Th those are my notes. Yeah. No, I agree. And I think the one thing is write, uh, write the, qu the question, uh, you know, why do politicians resort to such underhanded tactics? When you read it, it was more like a statement, but usually in the, we're getting in that season where these are the kind of political messages we're getting like automatically on our, our voicemail and whatnot. And that's the big question. Um, it's like, you, you wanna ask that question. It is, you are thinking out loud and the person you're trying to reach in, you know, in voting season, they are too. Uh, but you, you wanna put that question, you, you wanna catch them. And so uh, definitely that was a point where you really make that more of a question, you know, resort to underhanded tactics and, and be the voice in their head. Uh, make, make sure it's like, that's exactly Great what Great expression, yeah. great. The voice in their head, yeah. love it. All right, Rachel, thank you so much. You. Contestant number okay. three. Number four, Blake Mazur. Blake. Blake Mazur, hello. Mazur. You've got to relax. 
<laughs> I'm kidding. That was a great entrance. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's take a look here. Uh, please, let's do... Okay, let's have a little fun one here. Let's go to the last page. Oh, okay. This is a character. Oh. Number 37. Oh, great. Yes. My son. The day you were born, the very forests of Lord Daron whispered the name Arthas, my child. I watched with pride as you grew into a weapon of righteousness. Remember, our line has always ruled with wisdom and strength, and I know you will show restraint when exercising your great power, but the truest victory, my son, is stirring the hearts of your people. I tell you this, for when my days have come to an end, you shall be <coughs> king. <clears throat> Pardon me. Who's first? You? What? No, what were you asking? You want me to start? Okay. okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, are we trying to go first? I'll, no, I'll go. Go um, ahead, please. Uh, Blake, uh, very good. You, you made a character choice. Uh, a deep uh, so sounding. Uh, uh, more like an elder statesman. This, sound, this sounds like uh, a, a fantasy piece, possibly <coughs> a, a line from a video game. Um, one thing I want to point out, you, I thought you, you had a, a good pace right when we get to remember our line has always ruled with wisdom and strength. I felt as like that's a really good time for you to breathe. And uh, uh, what is it like, remember, our line has always ruled with wisdom chance to breathe, and strength. Somewhere in there would have been a good pacing to set yourself up for the, the old momentum. And, and that's where great times to use pauses to drive a point. They're also good breaks to, to, to breathe, to give you fuel for the, the second half of the, the piece, the, the, the speech, the monologue. Um, I, thought it was, uh, I thought it was very good. I'm glad that you, make a, you made a good uh, character choice. I could tell that you were, uh, you were into your into your uh, choice as character, and I think uh, with, with breathing in mind, I think you could even made that uh, that last sentence even uh, even stronger. Drive a point, just kind of like deep, uh, and just kind of end it. You could have really, uh, without overdoing it, you could maybe work uh, milk the words of the the last sentence there a little bit more. Um, but I thought it was I thought it was very good. Okay, my comment is, and, and it's breath. Guys, listen to me. If you don't put gas in the tank, you can't go very far. It's just the way it is. And you have a, a, a obviously a very beautiful voice. You want to be articulate, but you've got to load up more. You've got to bring more air. And I watched you breathe, and you breathe like this. It's very shallow, and it's all in the chest. When you breathe swell up that bring, I mean, fill up that diaphragm so that you could, if you wanted to, to deliver the whole thing in one breath. I'm, I, and that's not what I'm advising, but I'm saying, my son, the day you were born, the forest, and by the way, what is that word? Lord Aron. Okay, it seemed to me you were a little uncertain. I tried to, like, think of it like the best pronunciation at first and, like, just took my time with it so uh -huh. it sounded uncertain, but I just tried to say it, like, slow and Okay, my overriding criticism, and the criticism means constructive. I, you know, this is a note. Um, da -dum. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. And if you're going to do that and you don't have any breath and you're not taking breaths at those little pauses, did you feel yourself running out? And that nice deep voice suddenly <laughs> became a little shaky. You've got to breathe. You've got to take enough air in so that you can get through these things and make them important. Also, one final note, pick out the words you want to hit. You were sort of hitting words for emphasis randomly, I felt. And don't chop. You're doing cha-chung, cha-chung, cha-chung. Let, let, it's like Shakespeare. American actors always want to chop up Shakespeare. And when, in fact, the trick is to let it roll out. Just let it roll out. And, and stop when you get to a period. But it has a, a, a choppy feel to it for me right now. Other than that, I thought it was really terrific. 
Well done. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Blake. Logan Bell. Logan Bell. Logan Bell. Logan Bell, what a name, huh? It's a great name. There we are. Welcome to the stage, Mr. Logan Bell. Okay, page two, number 12. Page two, number 12. In many ways, the work of a critic is easy. We risk very little, yet enjoy a position over those who offer up their work and their selves to our judgment. We thrive on negative criticism, which is fun to write and to read. But the bitter truth we critics must face is that in the grand scheme of things, the average piece of junk is probably more meaningful than our criticism designating it so. There are times when a critic truly risks something, and that in the discovery and defense of the new. The world is often unkind to new talent, new creations. The new needs friends. Logan, I want to say that you have a beautiful velvety timbre your enunciation is perfect, and you would be applauded by a director if you were recording for an audio book, and I'm dead serious. That was, I thought that was very... I couldn't agree more. That was, yes. But uh, Uncle Terry, the old guy here, he's always harping on the same thing. Take breaths. <laughs> you must breathe. And let me tell you what's a good idea. I, I, I do this with my students. Take the copy and look at it and say, okay, uh, what were you on, 14? Uh, 12. 12. 12, right. In many ways, a, a, a quick diagonal line, a stroke as the British call it. Uh, in many ways, the work of a critic is easy. We risk, and I'm taking a breath every time I come to a period, and if the sentence is long, I pick a place within that long sentence to also take a breath. People are afraid to breathe, I think, primarily because they think they're going to get up <gasps> on the microphone. It, it, you won't. You know, just, just keep it down below. The, you know, it's, it's down in the engine room, and you're up here. You're driving. But every once in a while, you've got you to gotta open that valve up because it will make your voice, and I agree with, with uh, what's your name again? <laughs> I agree <laughs> with Steve that it has a wonderful quality, but no matter what the quality of your voice is, it's got to be supported by breath. And then you can just knock people out with that thing. I, I recommend singers. Any person who is a successful big singer, go listen to him or her. How do they do all that? They do it with breath control. The irony is I am a singer also. Well, then you know it, and nervousness kind of got in your way. Good. It's out of the way now. It's done, okay? Put marks in there where you want to breathe and, and don't then say, I'm not gonna do that. You know, we give ourselves notes and then we uh, don't do it. Do it, be deliberate and you will, you will kill, sir. Okay, well done, Logan. All right, thank you very much, Logan. Next, David Izquierdo. Thank you, brother. Yes, Steve. Nice guy. I love the music, it's great. All right, David, number 17, in that same page. Listen, here's the thing. If you can't spot the sucker in your first half hour at the table, then you are the sucker. Guys around here will tell you, you play for a living, it's like any other job. You don't gamble, you grind it out. Your goal is to win one big bet an hour, that's it. Get your money in when you have the best of it. Protect it when you don't. Don't give anything away. That's how I paid my way through half a law school, a true grinder. You see, I learned how to win a little at a time. But finally, I've learned this. 
If you're too careful, your whole life can become a fucking grind. This is Teddy's KGB's place. You won't find it in the yellow pages. Okay, well then. I'll lead off on this one. Uh, okay, so uh, this is, uh, it's interesting, this copies, everything's different here, so uh, it's a real challenge for you guys because I know what ultimately you're shooting for. But I like the fact that you can be conversational. It was very conversational. Two things, I have two advices for you. Mark where you're going to breathe, as I told Logan when he was here, and, and, and force yourself to do the breathing there. Often we'll make notes and then we get skitterish and think, no, I have enough air. No, you don't. So, and the other thing is, when I teach voice, especially, uh, whoops, I think I did myself in. Uh, especially when you're doing commercial copy, there is a thing about commercial copy, unless it's supposed to be startling and, and, and somewhat alarming, uh, to be friendly. And I think, you're gonna, everybody thinks this is crazy, but I call it the ding-dong effect. Ding-dong. Where did that come from? Why not ding-ding? Why ding-dong? This fifth, you know, and change. Uh, I think it's because it sounds like a person's voice. We ding-dong all day long. Hi, how you doing? Hey, hi. Steve, good to see you. Da, 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 da. And that was what we're saying is, I'm not a threat. We're friends. It's okay. Because if you take the ding-dong out, what are you speaking in a monotone? If you don't ding or dong, okay? So give it that, that parabolic curve. Uh, uh, what, what is it? Uh, uh, um, so, thank you. Listen, here's the thing. Da-da-da. If you can't spot the sucker in your first half hour at the table, then, you won't, then you'll be the sucker. See how that goes? And it's really engaging. It gets people to trust you. And, and uh, again, I use the word seductive. It, it, it makes people want to continue to listen. Good job. Yeah. I, I, I ditto everything he, he pretty much said, especially at the beginning. Ditto. Ditto. <laughs> ditto. 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 Uh, Around the time we got to don't give anything away, uh, you know, it was like uh, halfway through law screw, a true grinder, you see. Around there is where it got very breathy because that's, that's I made narts, that's where it sounded like you uh, just needed to breathe more properly to get through it. Um, got a, you got a wide chest diaphragm like a guy my size. It's like it's a wingspan and you can, when you learn how to move it, you can push it forward. And uh, and that's a great that's a great tool to have, yeah. especially for us bigger guys. And sometimes it took me a while, uh, a a while to to how to use my body head to toe uh, as far as breathing. But uh, you've got a you got a more powerful tool there than you you imagine. So uh, uh, just just keep it up. All right, David. Thank you so much, well Miss David. Mr. Casey, come on down, Mr. Casey Honeycott. Casey? Oh. Casey's MIA? Hello. All right, we're going to move on to Leonard. Come on down. Somebody was back there and disappeared. Yeah. There you go, man. Oh, there we go. All it's, right, it's Leonard. It's Ali. Yes. Yo, third person to get it right first try. Thank you, man. Yeah, I appreciate uh, it. What do I win? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You look great. Leonard, 18, on the same page. My dearest Allie. My dearest Allie, I couldn't sleep last night because I know that it's over between us. I'm not bitter anymore because I know that what we had was real. And if in some distant place in the future, we can see each other in our new lives, I'll smile at you with joy. And remember how we spent the summer beneath the trees, learning from each other and growing in love. The best love is the kind that awakens the soul and makes us reach for more, that plants a fire in our hearts and brings peace to our minds, and that's what you've given me. That's what I hope to give to you. Forever. 
I love you. I'll be seeing you. Noah. Well done. Okay, my, my comment is, I'm sorry, I thought you were first. Uh, I, I teach a thing in, in my class called vocal gestures. And vocal gestures, uh, gestures in general, are things that new actors forget to do. Uh, whether they're on stage or in front of a microphone, we forget that gesturing is part of how we communicate. You know, if I say, yeah, I mean, that that's, tells you a lot of information right there. And it's the same thing when you're on microphone and people can't see what you are. You can gesture vocally. For example, if you was, Dearest Allie, I, I couldn't sleep at all last night. You hear how I'm kind of putting that plaintiveness into my voice? Because I know that it's, that little ex, uh, exhale yeah. is also making a comment. I know that it's over between us. I'm not bitter anymore. Because I know what we had. See, I'm letting, my, I'm letting the emotions apparently take over, but I'm not losing control. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. 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 You know, I mean, those things all have meaning, and they can be very, very supportive of the text. So I don't have to overdo it, but just a little bit of that breath, a little bit of, of struggle with the script. That flavor with it. Yeah, just that little bit of... There was a very famous actor uh, uh, years ago, and his name was Jimmy Stewart. And everybody always said, in the 30s and 40s, he was super god, you know. And everybody uh, who knew him said, nobody ever studied his lines harder than James Stewart. Other guys were going out partying. He'd say, no, I got, I got to learn my script. And then when he got on the screen, he talked like this. Oh, well, uh, you, 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 you see... Uh, uh, and he was riveting. You couldn't take, you know, you had to listen to this guy. You, you do a great one. Do it. Give us some Jimmy. <laughs> well, you know, he, he talked. <clears throat> Guys, let me see if I can do it. Well, he, he talked like this, see, and he. I don't know if I could do it. My voice is shot. I know, you're having trouble with me your out voice. under the bus but, with that but, one. That's... No, I'm sorry. But you, <laughs> you, good, no, but what happens is you're <laughs> suggesting, because you're the actor, you're the guy that's in control. It's like Ali. He would faint and look like he didn't. No, and he'd get the rope-a-dope thing going, when in fact, he could knock you out. Yeah. And, and, and so just because you're strong, just because you're sure up there, don't, mean, don't think that you don't have to have some vulnerability. And this clearly calls for some vulnerability, yeah. right? Yeah, it, it definitely does. Yeah, so a little, definitely brought a lot go more, ahead. Yeah. Oh, uh, because... Yes, and I do see a lot of places where, like, especially when it comes to toward the end, when he's like that plants and that comes to, so that it can give that nuance to kind of lead into that, I love you. And then that can be the, the sure, so it kind of yeah. gives a nice rhythm to it. But let some of that, because it is long, roll along. Don't, don't cut it up too much. Don't chop it up too much. Yeah. And like, I'll smile. <laughs> I'll, I'll smile. When you smile, and talk, people he see that smile. It's true. And if, you t if you're not smiling, it yeah. sounds serious. But the moment you smile, listen to what happens. Everything that you do with your voice is governed by this, the mask. What you're doing with your face goes right into your voice and people see it. Mm -hmm. And you're beautiful, so let us see you. All right? <laughs> you can handle that. Yes. <laughs> Good work. Yes. Thank, you, thank you so much. No, I, right? I, uh, right, I think the most right important where you can really take your time to reach out is a point where it's like, you know, in other our new lives, you know, I'll smile at you with joy and remember how we spent the summer beneath the trees, right at the point, and then learning from each other. Like, that's a point where I think that's the big connect mm -hmm. in this in this right. letter of a speech. And uh, no, I think that there's, there's, moments to, there's moments you can connect, as Terry said, without overdoing it, where that's, uh, you're, just, you're letting this person know how much you know, 
you think of them and how much you know they mean to you and you know you know the best love is the kind that awakens the soul kind of like you're like this is reminding in case you forgot this is what this all means and i think that it's something that uh getting copy like this and going over it's uh i, I think you can find your uh, definitely find your way there and it was a great job you can't go over it and over it enough yeah yeah all right thank you thank leonard you so much. Well done. very thank much you. good job Paula, last contestant. Paula, oh, come on down. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. All right, Paula, please, number, let's take a look here. Number seven. Number seven. He makes you laugh. He makes me laugh. I actually like snuggling and never channel surfs. Doesn't he deserve a little extra attention from you? Each year, dogs of all ages, breeds, and sizes develop arthritis. So play, pay close attention to yours. If you notice a loss of mobility or energy level after normal activity, find out how Rimadil has helped nearly one million dogs with arthritis put quality of life ahead of their plan. Okay, hey. thank you, Paul. Uh, this is one of those, you know, uh, kind of like the, the PA, uh, like PSAs you would get as far as uh, for pet health and whatnot. And I think the biggest thing is, is something like this is the listener, uh, in hearing something like this, the listener will have concern for, uh, you know, have a concern for their pet, and they want to hear what you have to say because you're reading the signs. And I think right there. Excuse me. What? Could you quit talking backstage? Thank you. Thank, thank you actually for that. Um, no, but it's important because uh, you're 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 giving you're giving the signs. So it's like, if you notice a loss of mobility, or uh, what's a, a loss of mobility or energy level uh, after normal activity. You know, stuff like that, it's like you, you, wanna, you wanna punch those out. Because someone, someone who is like, you know, my, my dog or cat, they're, they're going through these symptoms, what is that again? That's where you wanna catch them. That's where what you're saying is important to them specifically. Um, and it's, it's, it's moments like that, you know. With all these, you, you hear these uh, uh, advertisements where they'll start, you know, for some type of medicine and they'll list the side effects. And I'll be at home and watching, and it's something is like, oh, is that for cholesterol or something? And they'll say, are you? And I, I pay attention. I was like, do, do I have that? If I've noticed, it, it's a, this habit. As you get older, it becomes one of those habits. Uh, but I think that's very important. And I would say, uh, in in something like this in particular, that's what you would want to take your time and and punch it because it's important. It's this is one of those advertisements that's important. Anything dealing with anything medical. Uh, you kind of want to punch the symptoms, punch the facts up. Yeah, yeah. okay. So here are my three uh, leading comments. The word is arthritis. arthritis. It's not arthritis. Okay? Arthritis. It's just three syllables. Arthritis. Um, and I think it was very cute and, and, and wonderfully the way you looked up from the script. Don't ever do that when you're doing a, an audio script. You never take your eyes off, because I guarantee you, you'll take your eyes off to be, you know, in, in, inclusive, and then where the hell am I? It will happen, I don't care if you, nobody can see you when you're doing this work, so don't worry about that. Be able to just be, spend every millisecond you have with your eye on the printed word. And the other thing is here, and this is a little touchy, and, and I, 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 I venture into this very carefully, but women culturally in this country, and I think in, in, in a lot of Western countries, have a tendency to talk up in their heads. So you get kind of a nasal thing. And I think it is cultural. I think it's like, well, Men talk down in here, so women talk up in here for some kind of delineation. When in this work, there's no delineation. Your voice may be a higher register, but you still want to use the bottom end. 
Listen, women, listen to the people who do commercials. They have bottom voices, those women. They talk to you like this. It's a higher register, but they don't talk up in here that much. And I, I'm over-exaggerating what you do, but basically get out of your nose and start to use your diaphragm. Good for you. That's exactly right. Arthritis, eyes on the script at all times. Super job. Thank you. You bet. Thank you, Paula. And that concludes all of, our, all of our contestants right there. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, judges, I'm going to ask you guys to go on step backstage. You've got some uh, tough decisions to make. and uh, well, We have you, drugs to do, too. That's, yeah, that, that way, too. That's, 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 so, so while you're doing that, I'm uh, deliberating. I'm going to invite all of our people up because we're going to do the filthy flashcards, which is a little bit of fun to entertain our audience as you deliberate. Well, we'll come out and watch. Oh, well, you gotta, you got to pick a winner. Christian Basil, Ty Hooker, What's that? Oh, yeah. Rachel Zool, Blake Mazur, Logan Bell, David Izquierdo, Leonard, and Paula. Please come up to the stage. Number one. I, oh, that's why. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, you two. Let's go. So far. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Why don't we just stay here <laughs> so we can see them? We okay if we stay here so we can watch? That's fine as long as you as long as you can be able to do a watch and deliver at the same time. It works for me. Okay. Already, absolutely. All right, all right. This is going to be a very, very, very simple exercise. And you, I know uh, Jay did this a little bit with y'all. I'm going to ask each of you to come up to the microphone, and I'm going to give you six non-dialogue reactions to things that may or may not happen. And some of these are absolutely absurd. Some of these could be very common, because again, <coughs> you never know what you're going to be doing. You never know you're going to be selling headache medicine. You never know you're going to be in a video game being thrown into a wood chipper. Don't laugh. It happens. So we're going to do this way. So starting with contestant number one, are you ready? Go on up to the mic. Now, here is one thing that I warn everybody. And our very first voice of Supercon took this note, and she won. Remember. It's vocal, it's verbal. Do not fall into the trap of entertaining the audience. It's very easy to ham it up, you know, if you get somebody's way too. Remember, think vocally. It's okay if you, to sell, sell the voice, if you gotta, that's totally fine. But don't let their reactions lure you away. Stay on point. All ready for this? You ready? Sign relief. Walking into a spider web. <laughs> Fall two stories. <laughs> what did I come in here for? <laughs> Next! <laughs> yeah, this is a lightning round. This is a lightning round. <laughs> give it up for that. Give it up for that. All right, ready. Ready. You found a $5 bill. <laughs> a balloon is about to pop. What the heck did I just hear? <laughs> You're laughing so loud so that nobody hears you fart. <laughs> You just ran your first marathon. <sighs> Applause! <laughs> Next contestant, come on up. Are you ready? Yes. It's going to rain because your knee is doing that thing it always does when it's about to rain. Uh... <laughs> Mother-in-law is calling. You found a penny. Oh. <laughs> you found a quarter. Oh. <laughs> Congrats, you're having triplets. Oh. <laughs> Outside in the heat wave. <sighs> and applause. <laughs> good job, good job, good job. <laughs> I gotta follow that. <laughs> Ready, boss? Yes, sir. All righty. You stepped on some chewing gum. Uh. 
Your phone says it's a call from unknown. These were not the toppings you ordered on your pizza. Why? <laughs> Congrats, it's a girl. <gasps> Yay. <laughs> you're about to vomit, but you're doing everything you can to not to. <laughs> Applause! <laughs> Next, are you ready? Is something burning? <gasps> oh! <laughs> <laughs> the rain finally stopped. Oh. Roller coaster ride. <laughs> <laughs> Where did I put my keys? Smashing your big toe. <gasps> Burning your tongue. <laughs> Applause. <coughs> Are you ready, boss? I'm ready. All right. Congratulations. It's a boy. <sighs> <sighs> Fawning over someone. <laughs> the ice cream falls off your cone. <sighs> Failed magic trick. <laughs> your back is acting up again. You love your present. <laughs> and applause! <laughs> Next, you ready? All right, your arm is sunburned. The damn cat is trying to wake you up to feed him after you're hungover. You hate your present, but you have to pretend you love it. Hold back a sneeze. Dodge a sword thrust three times. Sorry? Dodge a sword thrust three times. Oh. Oh. You are politely doubtful. Mm. 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 Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Applause! <laughs> All right, boss, ready to bring it home? Try it. Okay, okay. Are you ready? As I'll ever be. <laughs> the cast comes off and you feel great. We need to hear it. Vocal. Oh, vocal, vocal, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Chainsaw accident. Ah, damn. No words. Walking through the perfume aisle. Mm. <laughs> you proposed and they said yes. You put money in the machine but nothing happens. And finally, your opponent in chess just made a critical mistake and you try to hide your glee.
Got to hear something. I did, oh, I said I thought I did a. <laughs> <laughs> get Sorry. It, get, no, do it again. Get it. Get it. I did go. A, I did a. Mm. Then let's hear. Let's hear it on the mic. <laughs> All right, and applause. <laughs> All right, judges, you've heard both rounds. Uh, do you guys need a second to, uh, to kick some stuff over, or do you think you guys have got a decision? Yeah, we do. All right. Yes. And yes. Mm -hmm. We're only picking one person. Yes, it's one, two, yeah, one, one yeah. two, and three, and all that. But okay. if you want to give any special accommodation to anyone or anything else, you're both free, oh, absolutely welcome to. We'll start. You go ahead, you go ahead. Okay. Um, you were all terrific. I'm not trying to patronize you. First of all, you have the one thing a performer needs, courage. It is not, the thing that separates us from them is not that we're better, but we're on the stage. That's why there's a stage here. And once you make that step on the stage to perform and to reveal something truthfully about yourself, that's a display of courage, and you should never discount that. That's the thing that will carry you through. Believing in yourself and knowing that, yes, I'm willing to make a fool of myself in pursuit of my dream. And, and you guys, not that you made fools of yourself, but you're willing to take it to the extreme. And that's what you have and that's what you should validate yourselves for. Uh, you are all um, really very talented. And talent, again, comes down to the desire to do the work. And that's the starting place. And I, I congratulate all of you on doing something that I, I thoroughly, I had a great time this weekend. Came a great distance to be here. I think this is the most fun I've had. This was terrific. Yeah. It was more fun than our panel? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a short memory. <laughs> yeah, there you go. What's a Wookiee? <laughs> yeah, uh, I I don't think I can top that. I I, I, I applaud uh, everyone on stage. Your courage. Uh, there was a time when this gentleman and myself, twenty years ago, did uh, sketch comedy in Orlando, right. uh, in a bar run by gangsters. And I'm not kidding. He's not. I'm not kidding. And uh, there's a lot for us to overcome, but we. Uh, Steve, you're a funny guy. Yeah. Yeah, right. You're, you're a funny guy, Steve. Yeah. Patty, you're amusing. Steve's a funny guy. Yeah. Um, but We're going to pay you in food. <laughs> <laughs> it worked for me. Has it? Uh, but the fact is, is like, we're guys. I'm, I'm originally from Daytona. He's from here in, in South Florida. Being someone from Florida wanting to grow out and, and, and trying to push yourself into a career in an industry that will spit you out harder than you, and quicker than you can imagine. But like Terry said, if you have the will and the desire and the, and the, and the courage because you want it more than the people around you, um, it can take you a long way. So I've been in your position. I know what it's like. And, you, and if this is a career that you want, you all have a wonderfully natural talent with your courage to get that. It's gonna be, it's gonna be tough roads ahead and you're gonna fail more times than you succeed. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. Uh, but this was a great step and uh, I, I, I give you all a wonderful round of applause for, for doing this today. Because uh, I also had a wonderful time. So with that being said, thank you for your kind words. Thank you so much for your insight. What a, a proud applause for our judges. And before they announce the winner, one more round of applause for all of our contestants. And keep it going for all those that auditioned on Friday. And before this, we'll do this way. And so, gentlemen, are you ready to announce the 2019 Voice of Supercon? Why don't we do it this way? You say the person's first name, and I will say the person's second name. <laughs> the voice of Supercon 2019 is Logan Bell.
All right, let's all go out clubbing. <laughs> Actually, coming up next about a half hour, we will be clubbing because coming up next is our masquerade cosplay costume contest. This is the contest where people not only showing off their costume skills, Thank but performing you, expressions oh, and Keep skits and Everybody. singing and all kinds of fun stuff. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause for the voice of Supercon 2019.